So I just met the conductor and play through bits and pieces just to get a sense of my tempo and now we're about to start rehearsal. Yay! videos or do these behind the scenes videos usually have a live commentary but because we were very busy during the days in Berlin I couldn't really I did feel like interrupting you to film anything we didn't talk at all on camera so thanks for doing the zoom to add the live commentary that could have happened but we just didn't have the time to film so can you explain Shona Turner this concerts how did you pick those particular instrumentation mix genre the whole concept very unique concert where it's really music without borders i was looking for 
maximum contrast and opposites and bring them together and show that the opposites opposites actually don't exist because the music that we play is basically written because of the same longings fears just in another century and on another instrument but it's basically always the same song Tomorrow is the concert, and I have to now resist myself from playing because the past two days since I've arrived here, I have gotten very excited, a little bit too excited. Not in a bad way, but kind of in a bad way, just because he's a big guy. A concert ground is not something that I interact with on a daily basis. To be practicing in a concert hall that has no kind of limit is kind of a rare occasion. So the past two days I've been very excited to play a lot and play quite loudly to test out especially the Brahms first concerto, the first and third movement. Because for this concert, I'm only playing the second movement, but in two weeks or so, I will be playing back to back two nights of the first Brahms concerto and that's a very hefty piece and I wanted to test out and get a sense of how it feels like to play on a concert ground. In a way it's less effort but then because I was so excited and was super productive in practicing more on this concert ground, I ended up overexerting myself and I actually have a bit of soreness. So I'm resisting very, very hard right now to not play even though I'm the only one left right now. And I could just stay here because it's only around 3 p.m. But I cannot talk to you because I will be very tired. Tomorrow morning is 10 a.m. dress rehearsal and I will be playing everything twice tomorrow essentially because morning we're going to run through the entire concert with the orchestra and with the transitions of the different pieces and then 8 p.m. is the concert, so I need all of my energy for tomorrow, and I cannot, I cannot talk to you. dressing room doesn't have a light that's wait why does it not have a light that's not possible it's outside voila starting off with one of my least confident least comfortable for me to play the last movement of kinderzin least comfortable as in least confident because the last few chords i always freak out about whether I can make the voicing and the diminuendo well. If I go too soft, then I can't play all the notes, but it also has to quiet down into the end of the piece. It's been a concern of mine for every time that I've performed this piece. And the host picked this as the first. I'm the starter for the concert. I think I have to go. <laughs> this is gigantic. 
I look for music that has the theme already composed in the opposites, the contrasts, the antagonism. Antagonism. Right? Antagonism. Yeah, and I thought we can go through this in a musical journey through opposites in music, which do not just happen between classical music or old music and new music. They are everywhere. Like in Schumann's head, he had the two characters. You know, we have odd friendship in the program between Brahms and Mahler because they did not like each other's music, but some sort of fell in love the last seven years Brahms lived because Mahler was so good at conducting um, Mozart in Budapest. And we had the Odi at Amo, which is a poem by Catull, composed by Johan Johansson. Then we have Summa, which is um, a piece by Avo Perd, where he says this was the first time when he thought he has really managed to compose the simplest and the most complex in one piece. And that's why he called it Summa, because this is actually his, the essence of his composing. We have the two words, we had the electronic cello by Sebastian Plano. I discovered his music through you, through this concert. What made you pick him? Actually, I discovered him through a singer, Ben Lucas Boysen, I like a lot. And he worked with him making a computer game, philosophical computer game, where you can become oh. everything you want. That's why it's right. called you guys, Every. Uh, okay, you guys were talking about this. I downloaded it and played it, and I couldn't stop well, if you guys want to play a game. And I made a whole show about this music and this game. A lot of people commented, hundreds of messages. Wow, this is so nice. And we play day and night for weeks now already. <laughs> and then I kept listening on his music. I just loved how passionate he was. Yeah, the way he moves, it's really, he's really transporting the music. This looks even better than I thought. I've never had a Caesar salad like this. for the sneakers. The memo. Okay. Well, they will see your shoes. They won't see my shoes. <laughs> That's the black jeans and the sneakers and <laughs> I, I just missed I missed the uh, memo. <laughs> for me, it was definitely a very different perspective to play in your concert. So thank you for inviting me to be part of this. Probably the coolest, not to say that classical traditional concerts aren't cool, but just Everything about it was very fluid and the transition between pieces from classical to electronics to orchestral music. And I think it gave me a fresh perspective on music, this idea that it doesn't have to be categorized with labels and you can just have a concert with different genres of music as music, not even saying that they are different genres. So I think that was really- I'm very happy you did that yeah. because I know 
it's not easy to convince musicians to take part in this concept because everybody has to give up a bit of the biotopes where they normally live in. So for the electronic music, it's not loud enough and not dark enough. You know? Classical music need more light because they cannot see the music. You don't need the, the sheets, of course. But also for the piano, I had to slightly amplify the piano because of the volume differences. And this has to match a bit. And that's why I brought in a very experienced sound engineer who could amplify without you noticing it, just to match the different types of music a bit better. I couldn't tell, I think, of the amplification. I mean, I think it was a very rounded sound. Usually you play a note and then there's a little bit of a softer reverb from the hall and you can hear the kind of a gap, you know, that drop in the volume. But for this, I guess that gap was less because of the amplification, that dip was more drawn out. It needs a bit of support, so the acoustic instruments. In the concert, we had, for example, some tones being held by the electronic or by the orchestra, and then you had to pick up and play on it. That was fun. I tried to have matching keys so that this works, but I don't know if this would sound so good if the piano would be pure acoustic and jumping into a cloud of electronic sounds coming from the cello or something. Well, people can listen to the entire concert. It's still available on the radio website. So I'll put that in the description and I hope you enjoy the concert. And some people came actually. So thank you to those who came to this very special concert. It's funny that you say that some people have to give up some things uh, and it's hard to convince musicians. For me, it wasn't hard to be convinced. I think it's a really great concept and I like the philosophy behind it, but I was nervous. <laughs> I had to experience a few things and try. I forgot many and so many problems just popped up in the moment that I didn't see before because of course it's easy in the radio to just mix two pieces that are on the same key and you will yeah. fader up, fader down. But on stage, you have to move a piano, for example, because for the Brahms piano concerto, the piano has to be in the middle. Otherwise, you don't have the right contact with the conductor. I did not think about this problem when I put the program together. So I, that's why I had to talk before the Brahms. I was glad to find the story between Bernstein and Glenn Gould. I think 1962, when Bernstein had to announce before the concert that he couldn't agree with the pianist, who was Glenn Gould, on the tempo. And he wants to say that before the concert, that this is not his interpretation. So they agreed to play it the Gould way, which is not his. And he apologizes, and he was actually thinking of canceling this job. And. Also, Glenn Gould was not amused about this. So after this concert, he left the concert stage for 20 years. That was because it was such a hard experience for him. So, and all those opposites and uh, contrasts, and I told those stories in between. So we had enough time to move the piano and the microphones and the light because we played in the dark. That's cool. I didn't know that. For me, it was just that I didn't know German. So I was just wondering when exactly I was supposed to play. So that kind of threw me off, but I tried my best. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope everyone enjoyed it. So I think that's kind of it. Thank you for <laughs> explaining. For those Thank who you. don't know German, now you know a little bit of the uh, story in English. <laughs> I'm already sad. We can't do this again together. <laughs> You want to be in my vlog? Say hi. Wow. Hi. Hi. We played a concert. You did it. Thanks to you. She did it. You did it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yay. <laughs>